Hi, I'm Dr. Mercier, and we're talking fathers again. Everybody will tell you that black fathers, brown fathers, that they're not around. They'll even go further and tell you that they are deadbeat dads. But you know what? That's actually false. And what we're doing this month in honor of Father's Day is we're proving that. Joining me is Kelly Davis. Hi, how are you? I'm good, good. Good to good meet see you again, man. Yeah, we're not just, strangers, we're not strangers. No, 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 no. Let's, let's not even act like we can no, no, yeah, <laughs> just, uh, But thank you for agreeing to uh, join me mm -hmm. while we dispel some myths mm -hmm. about black fathers. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me about uh, your situation. How many kids? Uh, I have a total of four children. Okay. Uh, I've been married twice, so it's, it's a bit of a blended family. My oldest is uh, just turned 21. Wow. And okay. so uh, so it's, it's a blended family. My oldest uh, was from my previous marriage, which I also had got uh, primary custody of. Mm. So when I was remarried, you know, it's, it's you know, bringing in this, at the time, five or six year old child and then having three more children on top of that as part of the new marriage, so. Okay, um, so 21 year old, what's the next, what's the ages? Um, well, let's see, 21, nine, and three year old twins. Wow. Yes, yeah, so I got a nice little, <laughs> <laughs> I got a broad range from adults to toddlers. Oh so. yeah, Yeah. busy, busy house. Yeah. Okay, and so um, being a father, Raising kids, having kids for you mm -hmm. is somewhat of a unique experience. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's not unique for me because unlike a lot of black males, my dad was always there and is still there today. Okay. Um, so I've, I, I know that I have the example that a lot of young black men never had seeing their parents. My parents actually just, what, a week ago, just celebrated 51 years of marriage. Oh, wow. So I've always had that example of the black family you. Mm. So tell me your experience of, of your father uh, growing up. What was that like? Uh, you know, when I, when I say it's different for me, I used to get upset with my dad and tell him, you know, oh, dad, you're a workaholic. Because you know? he was, he was he, when we lived in Chicago, he worked for the gas company, and my father's also been a jazz musician. So he was working day and night, not realizing that my father was doing all of this so we could come to vacation on Florida, to Florida during the summer, uh -huh. or spend the week camping in Galena, Illinois, or going somewhere Fourth of July. So at, at, at first, I was like, oh, dad, you're not there. But then I'm realizing, no, dad is there. Mm -hmm. Dad's also um, helping to be the breadwinner. So um, so I got to see those examples. I also, I used to be, I used to get upset, you know, on during, on Saturdays when most kids were out riding their bike and playing, mm -hmm. you know, playing in the streets or whatever. I was digging up the, the yard, putting in a sprinkler system <laughs> or helping dad. my dad, with, uh -huh. helping my dad um, work on the car. So I, I learned a lot. Um, from my dad by example. So again, you, when you're a kid, you don't you don't really see it the way it really is. Okay. So he was like you were in your face. You, you saw him. Yeah. Regularly. Yeah. Dad was there every day. Um, you know. Uh, again, um, even though he worked, he literally had two careers. He always worked a corporate job and then you know playing music on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And mom was there with us on the weekends. But there were even times when. Uh, I remember one particular year, my father was playing at a very ritzy hotel in Chicago. And so while he was downstairs playing music, we were upstairs in the hotel room having room service. Wow. So, so I, I've had some really unique experiences, I would say, um, over my lifetime, myself and my older brother. I'm the youngest of the two, uh, two boys. So. Okay. You've been a dad now, um, how many years total? Well, since... Mel was born in 1996, so do the math. <laughs> One, two, I'm not even going to try to do that. So it's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. And so tell me about the lessons you've learned since becoming a father. Well, one, I find myself becoming my father. I find myself becoming my parents. They didn't have to explain that. You know, the, the whole, well, you better switch. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it sometimes when it becomes the, becomes, uh, and not just discipline, let me just say that, but on a on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say that I um I remember those things my father would tell me mm. as a young man, and I'm now finding myself telling my children the same thing. Okay. 
So yeah, it's weird when that happens. Yeah, it, it, you kind of have a little. It's like, did I just say what my dad? Uh -huh. You know, it's like a deja vu. It's like, wait a minute, I just said. I thought I'd never say that to my kids, but you find that um, when your parents really instill something into you um, that's positive, you find yourself using that to help raise your own children. And you're, it's bearing fruit for you with your kids. I, w I would say, yeah. I would say, yeah, definitely. Okay. They don't always listen, like, but I didn't listen when I was on the So, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, it, it, just like I find myself seeing or saying some of the things my father said, mm -hmm. I also find my children giving the reaction that I used to give my parents. Oh, what's so, that like? That's... Again, deja vu. You, you put yourself in... in in the place of your nine-year-old or your three-year-old or even a 21-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, and everybody has their own, and for lack of better words, their own bit of rebellion in them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Okay. To say and so a, a blended family situation, mm -hmm. um, wide ranging ages and then twins. So yeah. um, some people pray for twins. I don't know if you were one of those. But well, it is my fault, so <laughs> it's on my side of the family, so okay. it's definitely my fault. And so with a situation like that, uh, having been married before mm -hmm. and now coming with your daughter, you said, mm -hmm. um, anything challenging for you about uh, your role as a father? Well, I, I think part of the challenge, first thing right off the bat, is making sure that your spouse empowering them to be and I, I, I didn't want to empower my wife my, my wife to be her my daughter's mother because that's she has a mother mm -hmm. but in the same aspect I wanted to empower my wife to um, to understand that you have domain over my child we come as a package and when we come as this package you may not be our biological mother but you're the mother figure in the house mm -hmm. and with that being said you, you can't, I, I actually would think about it how a woman would think about it in opposite. You know, a lot of times when, when you see a, a single woman come into a relationship and she's got a child and she's bringing this boy or girl into the relationship and then mm -hmm. the man that's coming in, oh, that's my child. You can't talk to him that way. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not that because what happens is that sets a standard that the child will follow to say, I don't have to listen to what you tell me to do. You ain't my mama. Right. You ain't my mama. <laughs> you know, that kind of situation. You ain't my daddy. Yeah. So I, that was one of the things that, that was a, a kind of a rule that I said at the beginning, even when we got married, we incorporated my daughter into the marriage ceremony. Okay. So. Wise, wise, wise decision. I did it help, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to. I want to think. It did. I, I, I hope. I would hope that it did. Um, again, I wanted to um, continue to show my daughter, even during the time when, when after the divorce from my first wife and me and our mother were apart, I still wanted to have as much stability with my daughter. My parents helped me a lot, mm -hmm. you know, in the beginning with my daughter, so. Um, it was always about making sure that she had the stability around her. So she would, all, even though we were divorced, you would still see a family unit because look at your grandparents. Mm -hmm. So that's always kind of beautiful. Was that ever a concern for you? Um, with uh, You hear people talk about broken homes. Mm -hmm. um, as a dad, do you think that, did that ever cross your mind? It, it did, but one of the things that I learned is that you cannot use children to save your relationship in, in my opinion mm -hmm. no you're right um because what will happen is if it, if there is conflict in the house between the two spouses it's going to fall on the child one way or another whether yes, whether sir. you want it to or not mm -hmm. they're going to see the conflict they're going to see the arguments they're going to see you know they're, they're going to see the opposite of what they should be really seeing which is that family unit mm -hmm. So um, I I just made a decision that you know um, I'm after it got to a certain point where you know what this isn't working I needed to and actually it, it, it in my opinion I think it was better for my child for that to happen than to to see my child being and having examples of parents in conflict and all constantly in conflict and it's just not healthy. No. What do you hope your kids take away? 
from you as their father? Um, I would hope that they see how a black man loves a black woman. Um, I, I think that's, I think that's really important. I, you know, I, I do my, my own Facebook posts and I, I DJ a lot of weddings and stuff like that. And a lot of times when I'm posting stuff about the weddings, I always say black love, you know, um, because I think we've gotten away from that as a people. We've gotten away from seeing a husband and a wife and children together. And, and you know, it's, it's always a single mom or I saw something today about a single dad. Mm -hmm. Too many times we're either having children out of wedlock or our children don't see that family example. They don't see mom and dad coming home at the same time or they don't see dad doing the dishes or dad changing the diaper or mom taking out the garbage. The, the, even seeing what are either the conventional roles or the switching of roles, if you're not seeing that, you're seeing something else. You're right. seeing, you're seeing, you know, uh, mom being critical of dad because he's not around. Mm. Or you're seeing dad being critical of mom because she's not around. Um, so I always want my children to see what black love looks like. What are, and we, we, and let me just say this, I don't live in a perfect household. We, we have our conflicts, we have our issues, but we also believe in counseling, mm. um, which is something that uh, I think is a people that we need to start embracing a lot more. Yeah. Um, there was a time when I didn't believe it. You know, being, being you, 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 as a black man, it's like, oh, why, why do I need to go see a counselor? Why do I need, to? one of the best things I ever did was go to counseling because one, it gave you a neutral ground to express issues with your spouse where there could be no repercussions. Yeah, I commend you for that. So. Oh, she had to drag me to go, <laughs> but you stayed. I, but yeah, she had to. But, but, I uh, again. It also helps you to give you the tools of to one look at yourself, look at your wife, or look at your significant other, and look at the situation that you're in, and give you skills to cope, or to give skill, give you the skills to to deal with the situation differently. Than, than your first response, which is naturally to get angry or mm -hmm. denial or being upset. So I, I definitely say would say that counseling is, is definitely the way to go. That's big for our community, man. I, no. can't, I, no. I, I can't accentuate any more than you have, um, especially when you talk about black men. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tough as a black man, it is tough to, to express yourself. You know, um, we are, it's almost like we're naturally bred to be the alpha male. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in our DNA. And, but when you're, when you're the alpha male, I mean, think about, and I know this may be an unusual reference, but think about a pride of lions. Mm -hmm. You've got that, that alpha male that's on top of the pile. There's no counselor for him. No. You know? No. There's no, no one no, asks him if he's okay. Right. It's like, I, I, you're the alpha male. I'm the breadwinner. I got to do it all. I'm in charge of everything. Yeah. But in, in, in a human relationship, it's a little bit different. And and that's one of the things, actually that's one of the things that I thought about when, when I thought about what what I wanted to kind of get off my chest. I think that the, sometimes the black male gets it wrong. And what I mean by that is, is that having an understanding of what the male's role is in the relationship. But what do you think causes that? I mean, and not to sound, <sighs> you know, like give a typical answer. Some of it is society, some of it is the way we're raised, some of it is the way um, some of the examples of what we see of what a man is um, may not be the best example or may not be giving us the best, best advice. You know, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, when you when you look at the Bible and it says that the man is supposed to be at a household, we get it wrong. Oh, we do. We absolutely get it wrong. We think that the man of the household is ruling over the kingdom with an iron fist. Yeah. And that's not true. What that means is, you know what? Think about your relationship as a, a cruise ship. You're going along in the water. Well, somebody's got to drive the boat most of the time, or at least direct the boat. That's the captain. Well, what if the captain steps off the bridge? Somebody's got to be in charge. Right. That's your first mate. That's your wife. So that's what it means by being equally yoked. Yes, you're the man and you're the head of the household, but you still have to consult with your wife on what's going on. You have to do it together, whether it's 
dealing with finances, whether it's dealing with your children, you have to be in agreement on things. And sometimes your wife may have a different perspective that might be better for the situation mm -hmm. than, than you might think. And that's okay. Oh yeah. But, but again, you know, we have a tendency to think of the, the, the oh, I'm the head, I'm the man in the house and what I say goes and, you know, sitting on the couch, drinking a beer, watching TV and you just going to clean up the house. No, uh, you, uh, that, that's not what it really is. Um, even even today, because I'm my wife is in the corporate structure. She works for the school board. She's an assistant principal, and she does a lot. She will work all day and then come home and cook dinner. Mm -hmm. But then it's like on a day like today, it's like oh let me let me take care of the laundry and wash the towels and clean up the bathroom and clean up the bedroom before she gets home. Like when she she came home and brought the kids home, I accidentally turned my phone off because I went to reset it. And she's like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just cleaning up the room, mopping the floor, making up the bed, washing the sheets. You know, I want my children to see that being the head of the household means that you are responsible for everything that goes on in the house. Sounds like uh, servant leadership. Mm -hmm. I, that's an interesting way to think about it. Not just sitting up here commanding, but getting down. Yeah, doing, doing being, on, being on the front line, going, washing the dishes, take out the garbage, you know, um, change, like I said, when it's when it's bedtime, there are times when, uh, and again, having twins. So what's what's been happening lately is my wife, my my twin boys like to take showers. They don't like to take baths. Mm -hmm. So she'll get them in the shower together, and then she'll take them out together, and then they'll come out of the shower, and we'll, with the both of us, we're tackling the twins at the mm -hmm. same time. You know, putting on the pull-ups, putting lotion on the body, putting on the pajamas, getting the milk ready. Um, so. I, I want my children, to, my son, and I want my children to see that, you know, to see that being head of the household means that you are responsible for everything. That's a, it sounds like you're in every aspect I try to of be. your house. I try to be. I try to be. Good. Good for you. Good for your family, man. Sounds like they got a good thing, man. I hope so. <laughs>